feels really weird. <laughs> you are too early. I'm too early? Yes. I need to get ready also because this is a disaster. <laughs> so I need to do a mask and I need to shave and go. And Give you time to shave and... <laughs> no, 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 no. After this I need to relax and then shower and shave and mask and... I have my whole small routine, so it takes time. <laughs> You'll see the result later. <laughs> so, how is everyone? Good? Yeah. Nice to see you. It's a beautiful, yes, beautiful crowd. <laughs> I'm not used to that there because I'm not in the center of attention, so... <laughs> you always ask. No no, 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 as a coach, we are not the center of attention for sure, so different, different spot. So if you have any questions, please feel free. I'm, I'm ready to answer all questions. <laughs> and if I'm not ready to answer some questions, please forgive me. <laughs> Everyone understands English, right? Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, it's, uh, I'll start. Uh, the competition is not over yet, but uh, what are your impressions, highlights? Have you seen something, how it's going so far? Um, hmm. I really enjoyed the competition. I mean, I haven't seen much. I was uh, focusing a lot on my students, on Emmy and on Dennis, and uh, probably this week, highlight was Emmy's double axel half loop triple sow. <laughs> I was very impressed with that because we had plan A and plan B and I told her that if she misses her plan A she has to go for plan B and the double axel half loop triple sow was the plan B. So I was really happy that she managed to switch her her mind to plan B and she was able to do it so that was kind of uh, a very very good thing uh, about my student and um, and then since we came here uh, a couple months ago, uh, we discovered a couple things that, that we enjoyed here. So we were able to go back to, to the places that we liked and have some good food. And, and as you know, Dennis is really into food. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's important. My task is to, to make his environment uh, positive and also Emmy's environment. So. That's not only the coaching side, but also the, the coaching side means to me that, that I need to put them in such conditions that they can express themselves the best way they can. And, and it's not always optimal, but, but I think uh, that's my role and that's my job and, and I really enjoy it. So it's, it's a great week. Um, I saw actually yesterday, I saw a little bit uh, the last group of ladies and I saw also um, Gabi and Guillaume's short dance on TV. I was really impressed with that. I just, I just feel when I watch them, they are very expensive silk. It's <laughs> the, the, the touch is so special and, and it's, yeah, I, I would love to have a scarf out of uh, Gabrielle and Guillaume. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. How do you feel when all your previous rivals, like Brian Joubert or Thomas Werner or even Evgeny Plushik, and now are your rivals again, but in mm -hmm. coaching, how does it feel? Well, I think I was um, I was reading a little bit uh, uh, a text yesterday, and uh, the title was "Are Rivals Your Friend or Your Enemy?" and uh, and they are my rivals, of course they were my rivals, but I take them as my friends. They are part of my life, they are part of my job, and uh, they are also, before as competitor, today as a coach, they are pushing me to, to improve myself, so I, I, yeah, and it sounds like I'm reading you, the text that I was reading yesterday, but it's really the, this feeling of, they are, I respect so much their work when they were skating and now when they are coaching i know such a a job is is a hard job so i have full respect for what they do and and i thank them to to push me to improve myself <laughs> now, could you tell me what is the most difficult point for 
Most difficult points. You probably know me as a very emotional person. I think as a coach, you have to kind of put your emotions aside and you have to kind of find a stability uh, that gives an environment, uh, a peaceful environment to your students. So that's for me probably a big challenge, but I'm, I'm working on it and, uh, and that's something that I love. I think the more I move forward, the more I know about myself, the more I know about myself, the better I can uh, work uh, as a coach. about your student, Matilda Augustin, uh, because uh, I read in the interview that she had thoughts to retire, and uh, I really worry about it, so uh, you know, will she continue to compete or, or not? <laughs> well, she's working, um, I think what we um, do now, we wait for the Swedish Federation to give uh, the criteria for worlds. And when we have those criteria, then uh, we will work with, with them. Um, <coughs> my job is, even though uh, she could not qualify for, for big ISU uh, championships, I would like her to improve herself and I would like her to work on the things that she she's still scared of uh, succeeding. And uh, that's, that's my goal. If, uh, if at one point she feels that she has reach her limits and she wants to move on that's her decision I, I will not uh, change her mind or try to change her mind but if she's coming on the ice and she's willing to work I'm ready to help her to surpass her limits for sure I mean that's that's uh, um, I mean the main point of, of coaching it's it's to guide her where she wants to go thank you about future competitions, are you planning to take any skaters to Cup of Tiro? Yes, we are right now finalizing. Today is the last day of the registration, so we are finalizing that today with the with the team. I mean the federations, and uh, I hope to be there uh, in Innsbruck. I love to be at the Cup of Tirol. <laughs> so you plan to go? Yes. Yes, I plan to go. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who do you plan to take? <laughs> you will see. <laughs> <laughs> you will open the website and you will see the entries. <laughs> you can skate yourself. I can I can skate myself maybe in the during the practice. <laughs> I don't have a short program and I don't have a free program. So it doesn't make sense. You can take some of your own programs. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What programs uh, will you skate uh, on after nice? Uh, the same in Belenz in Belenzon? No, 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 no. I made uh, two new programs for art on ice. One is uh, finished. It's, um, I don't know if you know the band C2C. I did a choreo for uh, Tatsuki a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not the same song, but it's a different song from the same composer. And it's it will be played by uh, uh, by the band that is uh, there. It's uh, it's rather a very dynamic song and uh, with full of energy. I I hope I have the cardio and the heart <laughs> that goes <laughs> that goes with that program. It's uh, much fun. And then the second program, uh, we already worked a lot on it, but there is a, a still a small part missing that we have to work. Um, from Tuesday on with Salome. Um, it's to Goodbye My Lover by James Blunt. And um, and actually, uh, we, I don't remember, I don't know if you remember, but um, at the beginning of my uh, story, Sorry? <laughs> yeah, uh, you're beautiful, yes. But it's, it, the, the, um, the connection is from my beginning of uh, Art and I story when I was doing Take take the long way home. Mm -hmm. I had a backpack and I had a, a bench. And uh, now with Goodbye My Lover, it's it's a little bit um, um, a look back to the take, take the long way home. Um, Art on Ice is kind of my home also. And, uh, and there, there was a long way uh, with them. I think this year is 17 years. 
So um, we wanted to have kind of a look back to to that big love with with this show, and um, there will be a bench and there will be a bag, and uh, <laughs> and uh, I'll be uh, kind of looking at all those uh, great years. <laughs> Did you think to recreate, was there any, any time, idea to recreate your beautiful, this James Bond? Because when people saw that he will be the invited singer... That no, there was never, never this thought. I mean, uh, goodbye, um, I mean, um, you're beautiful was a very spontaneous uh, program that I, at <laughs> that point, uh, this music was uh, in my playlist and I really loved to listen to it and, and I was at a, at a competition and I needed the music and, and it was a very spontaneous feeling of going out and skating to that. Now I wanted something a little bit more, um, like, more interesting and more constructed. About Son of God. Yes. It's a beautiful program. So Thank how you. did you find the music? How did you get the idea to have this program? And did you make the choreography on your own or did you have some help? I always choreograph with Salome. It's mm -hmm. just that I, I trust her eyes and I trust her feeling to the music. Um, so every I, every program I made, except Karni Cruda and Poeta, Salome was uh, there in the creative process. Um, the music, actually, they, uh, the, the team, the Christmas on Ice team, they sent me two songs that I could choose, and one of them was Son of God, and I really enjoyed the dynamics of the music, and I really enjoyed also the, the melody and the power that is in this music, so I picked that one. And then we, we just spent uh, a couple days working on, uh, on that program. Uh, it's usually... Um, with Salome, we, we, we put the music on and we have a blank page and we just put some colors and some shapes and, and finally we have, we have the drawing. It's, it's how we work, it's, how, it's been like this for 23 years. So we have our own rhythm and I think it would be hard, it would be awesome for me to work with someone else but I just feel comfortable, she, she knows me, I know her, and she's my muse, and, and that's, that's how we work. Stefan, do we have some update about Ice Legend? <laughs> <laughs> I, it's in my mind for sure, um, and um, I don't have a specific plan right now, so I cannot really give you um, some details, but but I can um, reassure you that there is a wish, and there is a there is a wish, and there is a path towards that wish. I just need to create and go through all obstacles. <laughs> I hope our moral support will just help thank to you. realize it. Thank you. Thank you. Can you tell some about Nocturne? The program is great and about the costumes. Yes. The program is very great and very deep. Thank you. And, but this uh, absent sleeves looks some, something strange. Maybe can, can you explain something? Well, I think there are a lot of arm movements and it was to emphasize a little bit our um, arm movements. And uh, we have both of us um, I think a different approach to how we use our arms. It's a little bit different how Dennis uses his arms and how I use my arms. So we wanted to, to be able to, to see that. And I think the fact that, that there is one arm that is naked is giving a little bit more attention to that. And um, there are uh, a few, um, how can I say, original moves from this program that that uh, needs to be emphasized, I think. So that was the idea. With both black sleeves, it would have been too neutral. And with that kind of um, emphasis, we, we, we can see a little bit more what we are doing with, with our arms. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was really to emphasize the arm movement. Yeah. And then you can immediately, when you have two different arms, 
then you can immediately see which one is the right, which one is the left. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> I think the amount of student is n not a big challenge because finally I give my, it's not like I share my energy and I divide my energy is there is energy and I give all my energy to this one and I give all this en my energy to this one so it's just giving all my energy and attention when I'm present with them and that's not something that is complicated what is complicated is that each student is from a different federation, and each federation has their own system and their own competition and their own nationals and their own uh, rhythm in the season. So that's that makes a little bit complicated. Also because they are in different uh, categories, so you have to follow the junior um, season and then you have to follow the senior season. And some skaters they are in the Grand Prix uh, series and some not. So. There are many levels and many federations and many nationals, so that makes actually a lot of uh, competitions to to follow, and and that's that's tricky. It's really tricky with the schedule, but with my students, I feel when I'm home, I have all what I need to to give them my support and to help them follow the plan and. And our teamwork with Anna and Rob is also very important because when I'm gone, I need to be able to have. Uh, continuity in the work and and right now after um, almost five years uh, in Champéry we have found the rhythm we have found the system so so I can leave Champéry with the full trust that uh, Anne and Rob will will, uh, will follow the plan and uh, will do a great job so so it's teamwork and it's organization I'm not a big organizer I, I love to do things and uh, and I'm lucky to have also the office that organizes for me because <laughs> <laughs> I mean I I love to see that it's organized, but I cannot anticipate. I'm not a good anticipation. I'm I'm into action. <laughs> but when you're at competition with students, how do you manage to train yourself? Do you do only off ice, or do you manage to get some ice time for yourself? Somewhere? I do so. Uh, in Vancouver, I was able to skate before Christmas on ice. I mean, I skated one training on the ice during the week. It's not much. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I do every day some of ice. Mm. Yes, every day I, I take a moment for me to, to work on my body and to do some, some Pilates exercises, some core exercises, some Pilates and, and stretching. Yeah, so that's a little bit my routine when I'm away and when I'm home I, I keep training I mean it's really if in your mind you're you're ready for it you can you can prepare yourself you you need actually I was telling I'm not a big organizer but when it comes to my body and my health I have a pretty clear picture of what I want from my from my shape and from my my body feeling so I can work towards that and I can make things according to what I need so so in that sense I'm pretty good at organizing myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah some skaters they are very visual so they like to see and some skaters they hate that. Uh, they don't tell me they hate it, but I can <laughs> I can feel it because they they get frustrated. Like this old thing can do it, and I'm working every day and practicing so much, and <laughs> I cannot. So it's it really depends on the skater. You you have to. Some skaters they they don't need many repetitions, and some skaters they need a lot of repetitions. It's really personal, I think. It's you have some people have a visual memory, some people that they, they prefer to to hear my voice and some people they they just want it to do their own thing and I just need to support them to do their own thing. So Which type of lizard? <laughs> <laughs> Dennis? 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 Dennis?
Depends on the mood. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very versatile person, so you really need to be receptive to what kind of dentist do I have today? <laughs> <laughs> It's more than April. It was a good program, but you skated it in 1917 and then leave it. Why? What's wrong with it? In 2017. It was such a hard program. It was a really, really, really tough program. Um, and I loved to skate in. There was, n there was an opportunity when I was in Japan. There was a really good opportunity, and I loved to perform there. And then there was not really an opportunity to skate it again. And and since there was no right after no one, not an opportunity to skate it, it kind of um, I was not able to because it's difficult. I was not able to put my energy into it again, and the opportunity was gone. So I don't know if. I will go back to this program. But it was a lovely, I, I really enjoyed creating and I really enjoyed skating that program. It just takes a little bit of effort to put all the pieces together. So the opportunity was missing after the tour to skate that program again. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, during this week, we organized uh, my weeks from now to Worlds, and it's almost organized, but I don't have, it's not in my head right now, so <laughs> I know that it's very busy, <laughs> and, uh, and I will be probably in uh, Zagreb for, for Junior Worlds. And in Saitama for Worlds, and in between there are competitions, but I don't know exactly the weeks how they are going. Like, but I will be every week somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's kind of scary to not know what's happening <laughs> next week, but I know what's happening next week, and and I know what's happening during Art on Ice, and after. I know more or less, but I, I still need to have a better picture. Um, I will have probably a couple days after Worlds, but my vacation is uh, planned uh, end of April, beginning of May. Yes. <laughs> I get very bored in the in the holiday. So. <laughs> <laughs> holiday, it's like after two days, I'm okay. I'm go. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> my bat yeah, my batteries are full. Let's go back. But actually, it's important to not only to charge the batteries, but also to shut down the batteries. And <laughs> yeah. when you're coaching and the student is not doing what you want. What steps can you take? <laughs> <laughs> there are different. I I'm. I mean, if the person is not able to do what I ask, then there are other things that we can working work on. And if it's a difficult jump that we are working on, usually what we do, and I see that we are stuck. I will not force it, and and we have some exercises that we will do at the end of the practice. So I will kind of uh, stop. We will stop where we are, and we will move to other things to work on. And then at the end, I will do exercises to help the problem that we faced. Um, and if the person is not able to not the able to do it, but not able to go on the track to work on something, then it's a different uh, situation and th because the mindset is not there or the, the attitude is not there, then you have different ways. I mean, usually it's a problem of frustration, of motivation, so then you can just give them uh, a break so they can come back to themselves or they can do something, uh, work on endurance. So usually what I do is I, 
I give them an exercise uh, of entrance either on the ice or I ask them to go in the gym and to bike so they can make their body uh, roll and and once once it's rolling and you have to do an entrance your mind kind of release and then you're back on track so there are many ways to to work on the mindset but it yeah you just have to to see how how the student is doing it's it's or the physical abilities are not there or the mindset is not there and then by 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 that or both so then you have to to work with that Oui. You once uh, told me that uh, for a very long time, I don't know if it's still, uh, you were, uh, you told Vu to Salome. Like you were to Salome, friends, yes. You were friends, like you were friends for years, but it was Vu, because it was kind of distant, so mm -hmm. you go on your... Mm -hmm. What is your relationship with your skaters? Do you think, do they have this, like... So with Salome, she asked me once when, uh, in 2010, when I retired, she asked me at that moment to, to say tu, and I was not able to switch. And, uh, and then a couple years later, she asked me again <laughs> to switch to tu, and the second time I took, the op the, I took my chance and, and I switched to tu. Um, Peter never asked me, I think. He never yes, asked no. me to switch to two. I still d say vous. And for me, it doesn't... Mm, how can I say? It doesn't give me any distance. It's Peter is like my father. And it doesn't give me a distance between him and, and me by saying vous. It's more our way of communicating. It's almost like his name I mean in in my in my optic and with my skater is this I don't ask my skater to say vous or to say tu they s we have our relationship we have our respect and if they feel that I'm young enough that they can s they say tu I'm very pleased and if they think I'm old and they want to say vous I also accept that <laughs> And Excellent. probably the more <laughs> I will grow and the more vu I will get. <laughs> but that's that's life, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so I, I don't have a rule for for vu or two minutes. Last here. My, sorry, oh. one more thing. My mom she still says vu to her mom. to her mom. And yeah. And they are very, 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 very close. So yeah, that's it. Please. <laughs> uh, last year you had a summer camp in Daugavpils. Yes. How do you like it? And uh, will you play another one in this year maybe? So and when? <laughs> 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 so I loved it. And um, we all um, got a big impression from Daugavpils. Um, we don't know if we will go this year because last year we actually made the plan to help Dennis finish his high school. He had uh, many exams to pass there, so uh, we decided to move our students and our school there to so we could still be around uh, Dennis and support him. And uh, and of course the conditions were great for for all of us to train there. Um, plus the weather was wonderful so we could we could walk outside and we could stay in the park in front of the ring so um, it was really really lovely and a, a great time if we go back uh, it would be somewhere in May but we we didn't decide yet the place where we, we will handle uh, the summer <coughs> the, the spring camp yet but I will come back to Daugavpils Fields for sure. <laughs> I, I have my my little places that I want to see. <laughs> what about Minsk? Minsk? <laughs> I will come back for sure. <laughs> I will come back. I I, I went to the beautiful um, last time we went to the beautiful park in the center where there is a bridge. It's it's the freedom. 
Freedom Park or Freedom Bridge, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's very lovely in the center. And uh, and we went, we were staying in a very uh, comfortable hotel there, in more in the center. And, and then I found a small coffee shop and I found a small <laughs> restaurant and and I was walking to the mall to find um, there was a hole in Dennis' costume, so I had to sew something. So I went to the mall to find the. Oh no 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 no! Oh yes. So <laughs> now I remember. I remember. I remember that afternoon. I was. It was crazy. I was looking for an elas uh, elastic mm -hmm. because he his short program costume was not ready. So he had a shirt, and uh, in order to to keep the, the shirt in the pants, I needed to find elastics to to sew on the shirt so it would stay down there. So I was looking in every supermarket some elastic and and there was no elastic and then I finally arrived to the supermarket and asked every lady in this this supermarket to find some elastic and she couldn't find it. So I bought a very um, cheap um, sports pants <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in the sports pants around the waist there was an elastic so I was cutting the, uh, the <laughs> cutting the pants and then removing this elastic and then I used the elastic to, to fix so it was a pretty exciting afternoon but it, it took me so long just to find an elastic <laughs> So I remember my, my little walk looking for the elastic. <laughs> what time is it? Yes. So two more questions. <laughs> two more. So We are planning to skate senior next year, but it's really, I mean, it really depends on how he will skate the second part of the season. Um, as you know, there are many Japanese skaters and there are many that want to compete at the senior level. And so it's, we, we still need to, to also discuss with, with the Federation and, and see what's the plan for him. But he needs, he still needs to, to skate the second part of the season. <laughs> so you intend to continue you made experience in such kind of prayer skating or dirt skating. <laughs> 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 so exercise about how do you, uh, how do you find the idea to to do the throw jump with Dennis, he's not a pair skating, maybe it was dangerous. Yeah, but so it's. Uh, <laughs> Actually, it um, it's also a way to learn. Dennis has a natural feeling for movement, right? And and the fact to have to handle with some forces and some some using tension that that's something that we had to face in in Nocturne. We had to understand how can we use each other to make it more more harmonious, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's really um, interesting for him to also learn that because it it gives him a sense of mobility and 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 then i don't know i it was just a natural feeling i and i think he he kind of understood that the thing and then aliona was there during the practice aliona was there and she was trying to do because mm, i don't understand how to throw an axle for me it's it's uh it's something that i don't i still don't I love doing axle myself, but I don't understand in pairs how the man is able to 
to give space to the woman to go for the axle because he's kind of, of on the way because the woman is going forward and the man is going backwards and, it, and it's kind of like get out so we were asking her that and and, and then yeah it, it's for me very interesting in pairs how they use each other for the technique and and I did a couple seminars for the pairs in Berlin and to listen to the pair coach I understood well in figure skating we are working on so much on so many details but pair skating has so many different elements and and it's so different what they are working on the timing for the the twist and when to open the legs and when the man has to push and then he can bring the arms down or not and that's all kind of things that you don't realize as a single skater but in skating you have so much and then in the ice dance is the same thing you have the quality of each turn is pushed to to some more precision that we do in singles so it's for me very interesting that's to see that figure skating is even wider than what i imagined so i want i what my point is that dennis is a person that is very curious and i want to feed him with with this kind of world that that expands to more knowledge yeah so maybe details uh, of pair skating uh, do you want to choreograph some uh, program for pair skating why not i mean um, i i'm very open i worked with ice dance and and i really enjoyed it and i don't know if i would Stefania, Stefania. Yeah, I worked with exactly yeah. Stefania Nondra, and um, I got a couple of requests. It, it was not uh, possible to make it, but uh, but for sure I'm I'm ready to to help. I love to work with two persons. It's really interesting what we can do together, create. Uh, <laughs> I love to watch, uh, for example, I love to watch uh, Sui Han. I really enjoy their skating and I really love Tarasova Morozov, of course. And uh, I mean, they were, they were my favorite. And maybe Maxim Tankov will your coach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I can take him in shape and he can, he can start working uh, as a care coach from, from my school. <laughs> So but thank you. I sometimes get uh, a feeling uh, looking at um, some dance bar or pair, uh, pairs uh, that oh, I would like to do some choreography for them. Do you have such a feeling? Mm. I don't know. At the moment, I can probably when I see. Uh, mm, I don't have this. F for my skaters, yes. W for people that I have worked with, I sometimes have moments where, or I'm driving and suddenly I, I hear a music. I can see someone skating to that music, or, or. Um, or when I see my skater, I, I I understand. Oh, I would love to try something or uh, with the people that I work with. But then I cannot imagine. I like I I cannot watch this competition and then decide. Oh, with this skater, I want to do this program with this person. It's more if there is an opportunity, I'm I open the door and and I see what's what's there. But I. I'm not pushing the door. <laughs> okay, we have a live, live video now, and yes. yes, people are watching, including in Mexico. Uh, in Mexico? <laughs> so what time is it in Mexico? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to say a few things. Hello, Mexico. Hola. <laughs> And I don't know where you are in the world, but uh, <laughs> we are in Minsk, and it's wonderful here. There is a beautiful cloud <laughs> outside, <laughs> and a lot of snow. And uh, we wish you all the best, and see you soon. <laughs> Maybe the picture with yeah. all of us. Yes, yes, I will come. Stay, stay. <laughs>